We are reviewing the bread slicer choke. That's what I think it's, what people call it, bread slicer, paper cutter. Mm -hmm. You know any other names for it? Yeah, that's a... I, I have one other name for it, my favorite choke from Side Control. Um, <laughs> um, just to review so you understand how this, this choke works. You have to realize that the lapel of the gi is very similar. Let me show you. And you know, the funny thing about this is that I, the first time I realized this was back in, I want to say like 95 or 96. Um, there was a gentleman that was training at Nelson Montero's gym that actually started a, a company called Gameness. I don't know if Gameness is still around, it probably is. But he was kind enough to invite me and some friends that trained with him to his, um, to his um, place where he had all his geese, okay? And he made one gi, which I'm sure would be illegal today. And it had a collar that was so darn thick. There was no way. It was like taking hold of a, like a, a rope on like a, a battleship. Um, and he showed us how he was making it. When I saw it, I mistaked the collar for a belt. I'm like, wow, that's one huge belt. And he's like, no, 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 no. We fold it in, it gets stitched. And I was like, oh, wow. And then it, all of a sudden at that time, it made sense to me. And I've seen other people demonstrate this too, that the collar is nothing more than a belt that wraps around your neck, but is connected to some material. And when you can kind of visualize this, a lot of the collar chokes that we use make a lot more sense. And this is one in particular that makes a lot of sense because the, the, the bread slicer choke, without utilizing one side of that belt, is nothing more than what we call a hammer choke just coming across. Now, sure, if you're super strong, something like this is gonna be effective. I mean, it's gonna wear your guy down, and I mean, even though they're super skilled at pointing, you're probably not gonna tap them. But at the lower levels, yeah, sure, you're gonna make a lot of people uncomfortable with this. But what's the problem when I only grab one part of the lapel and pull it down? Well, think of it as a belt. The issue is this part's gonna slide up. So in most, not all, but most lapel chokes, it's pretty important that we have one side that we take the slack out of so it doesn't move so then we can attack both carotids, okay, both sides of the neck. If I do the bread slicer without my pulling arm, my secondary hand, and I only use the primary hand, there's always a chance that I'm not getting enough stability out of this basically belt or rope that's around the neck. So just as an overview of the bread slicer choke, I'm actually taking one arm, I'm coming behind the armpit, and I'm getting what we call a horse collar grip. So it's a four finger grip, if you can get in there, Eli, so you can see a four finger grip in the inside of the collar. And when we grab the posterior portion of it, we just call it a horse collar grip. That obviously is gonna take all the slack out of this side of the lapel, so now when I pull, I've got a real stable choke here. Now, that's the basics, or the basis of that bread slicer choke. I have one arm that goes into the axilla, four fingers in to the horse collar grip, thumb in with the opposite hand, I bring my elbow down, and one side of the lapel is attacking one carotid, my wrist is attacking the other carotid. There are a lot of variations on how to do this. There are some folks that love to grab super deep. Um, there's other people that like to grab more shallow and flare their elbow. We're going to do a, a technique I, I don't see a lot of people do. My professor taught me, but I see very few people do it. But believe me, this is, in my opinion, the most effective way to do this choke. So whether I take a deep grip, shallow, it doesn't matter. What's the limiting factor on the, on the choke, how tight this choke is? Well, it's the ground. So when my thumb comes in, my elbow comes down, depending on where the ground is, that's usually where I have to flare the elbow out to get the choke. Imagine if the ground wasn't there, imagine how far around I could take this choke. So how do we make the ground further away so we can actually pass the elbow further? We tilt 
our partner up on his side. So if I could perform the choke with my partner on his side, again, coming in, four finger grip, horse collar grip, thumb in. Now look how much clearance I have from the ground, which allows me to get a tighter and tighter and tighter choke. Because I've taken the ground away, I now can bring the elbow down. Now I can also flare back out and then I can open up that carotid. And the beautiful thing when you flare the elbow out, what you're doing is you're compressing the carotid against his lapel here, but I'm also pressing against this outside lapel. I mean carotid. So anytime we use a forearm, it's always nice to expose. And whenever we're using a, a lapel, it's always nice to compress, okay? So how do we get to this position? That's the tough part. Um, if we're in our traditional side control position, our partner is probably gonna to wanna to be framing with this hand. If they're not doing anything fancy, just basics of basics. He's gonna keep this arm framed against my hips as I come in here for a nice side control position. So I got my reverse half Nelson or cross face, whatever you wanna call it. I have my under hook on the side and I'm blocking his hip with my knee. Okay, so a basic side control position. So from here, I don't have the right position on my partner to execute this horse collar grip on this side. I've got to get his arm across my belly. Now, he may volunteer this to me if he's trying to, an escape. So if he's trying like a ghost escape, that's what we call it. He's going to under, near side underhook. He's going to try to lift me over his head and come out. Okay, well, if he goes for that, then sure, when this arm passes underneath, that can give me the go ahead to shoot for my uh, horse collar grip. That's pretty rare. That's pretty rare that's gonna happen. What I find is a little better for me is I exchange my grips here. So I'm gonna go hand by my knee to replace my knee. So hand by his hip to replace my knee. I'll come back over the top and I'll start working towards his head. When I start working towards his head, a lot of times his arm will pop out in fear that I'm gonna start getting him in this position. Okay? So let's watch that again. I'm in a normal, just regular classic side control position with the reverse half, my underhook. I'm gonna bring my reverse half out to the opposite side of his head. I'm gonna take my right hand, place it by the hip to replace my knee. Then I start rotating around. His arm pops through. Once it pops through, this hand that's by the hip is going to shoot for my horse collar grip here. You got that, Eli? Once I have that horse collar grip here, I'm gonna rotate my hips back, and I like to bring my hand behind his head and wedge him up. Now once I wedged him up, look what I did with my knee. So let's go back to that. So my arm is gonna replace behind his head. I'm gonna lift as I bring my right knee in. Now this right knee acts as a wedge, which makes it very hard for him to roll back. If he tries to roll forward, I have his arm hooked and I have all my body weight on him. We're gonna do a whole different video on how there's so many different ways to grab this collar. But for today, for right now, I'm gonna dive my hand in tight to his neck, bring my thumb in, bring my elbow down and flare out. Just like so, okay? Let's do that again. Traditional side control position. My reverse half, my underhook, I'm in tight. I'm gonna replace one. I'm gonna replace two. I start to move to this modified kind of north-south, his arm comes through. I'm gonna shoot for a horse collar grip. I'm gonna wedge the head. As I walk 
up and replace my knee. Now from here, I shoot my thumb in. I bring my elbow all the way to the mat and I flare my elbow out right there. Now, it is not uncommon that he's, he knows that this is coming. He knows that once he gets his arm between me and his body, that this horse collar grip, grip is going to come. And so he's going to be pretty persistent not to give me this arm. So we go back to our position. I still want that because remember, it's my favorite choke, right? So I'm going to go ahead and switch, switch, and he doesn't want to give it to me. He's framing on my hips. He's not giving me the, the, the north-south choke. So I'm going to switch my arms to the inside and just go to north-south. Once I come here with this arm, notice how I went to north-south by bringing this arm to the inside. I now have my horse collar grip on this side. I switch my arm behind his head. I lift up. I wedge in. And I come right here. Okay. We'll see that one more time. Turn this way, guys. So I get to my side control position. I replace. I replace. I go north south. He's not giving me what I want on the near side. So I go full north south. I keep rotating until I get my horse collar grip. I'm going to wedge behind the head. I'm going to run towards, replace my knee so he can't come back, and I come in. Now realize, you don't have to do the head wedge. It's not something you have to do. I might be here after my horse collar grip, get desperate, and just come here for my collar choke. I'm just telling you that if you're able to come to this wedge, sit him up, you're going to have more clearance to get a more efficient choke. And like I said, we're going to go over all the different ways because he's obviously going to be blocking his hand. He's not going to let me just grab his collar. So there's a lot of tricks that we can do to get this. But for right now, getting him to this position is money. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you like that. We'll be putting out more content and kind of get that technique a little bit even more robust than it already is. Hope you enjoy it.